Good morning and happy Sunday. Glad to come to you again through this online service as we worship together as the body of Christ. Uh, though we are apart uh, together and worship together around God's word. Do we have a few quick announcements before we enter into our worship service? First of all, I know there are a lot of questions about what our plans are at St. Peter's for reopening, for gathering again, for in-person services and other functions. We are always evaluating these things, and our church leadership is in discussion about these things. And so we hope to have um, an update in the early part of this coming week to you uh, with some of our plans, some of our things that are on our mind. Obviously, we're waiting also for some direction from uh, the government and so on as far as uh, precautions and other things that need to be in place and updates to orders. But stay tuned, those will come soon. In the meantime, we will continue these online services. We do have things in place. And there's an online service that I wanna tell you about uh, for this Thursday. This Thursday is Ascension Day. It's one of the most important uh, days in the church year. We normally think about Christmas and Easter, and we might even think about Pentecost. But when you think about Christmas and Easter and Holy Week and all that kind of stuff, what comes right along with that is our, the Ascension of our Lord something we confess each and every week in our creeds. And so this Thursday is Ascension Day, 40 days after Easter, and we are going to have a service. It's not going to be a pre-recorded service like these ones, but it'll be a live service. Information will be going out to you soon, uh, but it'll be a live service, 7 p.m. on YouTube, uh, for you to tune into about a half hour to 40 minute service, prayer service and, uh, and sermon. So please, uh, mark that down on your calendar, 7 p.m. Ascension Day, as we celebrate the Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Vacation Bible School is scheduled for June. We are still planning to do Vacation Bible School, but I want to let you know that Vacation Bible School is going to be different. It's going to be, if you will, a virtual Vacation Bible School. We will have stuff uh, set up for you to take home, do with your kids. We'll have videos in place, uh, teams working on it. Uh, Veronica Johnson is working hard on it along with uh, other members of our uh, children's ministry team and so we will be putting that information out there soon but um, we won't be having an in-person gathering at this point in time for VBS uh, but we will still have VBS just in um, a different kind of way and so we're very prayerful for that and pray that uh, it's a great time for families uh, to, to uh, gather around God's Word uh, praise God and all of those kinds of things. Thank you to everyone who brought food donations for Okra Food Bank. Uh, we're just blessed that uh, we can be blessed to be a blessing in this community. Don't forget all of our virtual gatherings and studies that we have going on from adult Sunday school to our adult education class on Wednesday evenings, as well as our men's Bible study on Tuesday morning. And the youth have asylum, coffee and cues, as well as Sunday morning, Sunday school. And last but not least, uh, again, we're always thankful for the tithes and offerings that you provide uh, for the ministry of the gospel here in this place. And we uh, pray that you continue to uh, give as you are led by the Holy Spirit. And there's ways to give via online as well as mailing in and dropping off. And so again, we thank you and we pray for the continual work here uh, to continue. With that, those are the announcements. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. And now our opening song is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, His scepter, His Is a victory. 
secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take this moment now to confess your sins silently before the throne of God's grace. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake he forgives you all your sin. 
as the called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our next song is In Christ Alone. Yeah. 
first reading today comes from Acts chapter 17, beginning with verse 22. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends our first reading. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered, once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Here ends our second reading, and at this time, kids, it's time for the children's message with Pastor Eric. Good morning, kids. It's a joy to uh, come to you again with this video and another children's sermon. And uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about hard times and uh, stuff that we go through in life, difficulties and things like that. Maybe you're experiencing a little bit of that right now. I know that some people are, and uh, this is a weird time that we're living in. And frankly, we need help with times like this. Well, I know that I need help. In fact, I need big help. And we all need big help because we're all sinners and we have a sin problem that we can't solve for ourselves. And so, you know what? God sends help to us. And perhaps you know the biggest help of all that he has sent to us. And uh, that person is Jesus. And so uh, here I am, a sinner with problems, and I'm feeling all alone in this world. And what does God do? He sends Jesus to us. And uh, Pastor Joe is going to be Jesus for us today. Um, maybe it's not hard for some of you to imagine that. I'm getting used to the idea. 
But uh, God sends Jesus to us, and the scripture says that Jesus is our helper. That uh, Jesus is uh, one who comes alongside of us, and that is really, really great good news. Uh, but God doesn't stop there because he sends us another helper too. In fact, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will send you another helper. And I wonder if you can uh, remember in your minds or if any of you know who that helper is. I'm going to give you about uh, two or three or four seconds. Uh, do you know who that helper is? Well, that helper is the Holy Spirit. And so when Jesus was risen and then when he ascended, he promised the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, uh, Rachel, Mrs. Shoemaker, is going to stand in for the Holy Spirit here. And thank you for doing that. Um, and so this is great. I have Jesus as my friend and helper. And Jesus has asked the Father and the Father has sent the Holy Spirit. I have the two biggest helpers I could ever want in the world. But you know what? Um, I haven't seen Jesus. I mean, I know that he's here and he's present with me, but I haven't actually seen him like I can see Pastor Joe. And we don't see the Holy Spirit at all. You know, they're, they're kind of invisible to us. And it would be nice to have some help where, you know, with people that I could see. It'd be nice to have some friends and maybe uh, God could help me that way. And so, you know what? God sends us friends. Because Jesus tells us, love one another. And as we love one another, it's actually kind of like we're being Jesus to one another. And so he sends us friends. And all of a sudden, I don't feel so alone anymore. I feel like, gosh, I've got some support here. I've got some helpers. And that's what uh, being a Christian is all about, is to be in fellowship with Jesus and to have the Holy Spirit and to have my brothers and sisters with me to help me when I need help, when I need to get back on track again, uh, when I just need some support, when I'm going through a hard or difficult time. Isn't it great that we can count on Jesus to be by our side and the Holy Spirit to be with us and for brothers and sisters who love us uh, and for us to love them back again? That's what it means to be a Christian and to live the Christian life. So will you pray with me right now? and? Uh, Thank you all of you for uh, being part of the video this morning. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for coming for us to be our helper and our advocate. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to help us. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you call us together as brothers and sisters and you tell us to love one another. Thank you for giving us the power to do that. We thank you for these great gifts, Lord, that we can know your love through the people that you send into our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you this week, and uh, uh, stay strong, stay faithful to Jesus, and hope to see you all real soon. At this time, please rise as you are willing and able for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. 
And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The Holy Gospel. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated as we continue to worship, singing the song at the cross, Love Ran Red. See you in, never die. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. How will we make it through this crisis? And what will sustain us through this crisis? That's a question that's on a lot of our minds right now. Well, I remember when I was 15 years old, I faced the first real crisis of my life as a Christian. Uh, it was winter. I remember that that year it rained a lot. Mom was in the hospital with a strain of pneumonia that they couldn't identify. And they told us they weren't sure whether she was going to make it or not. And then my sister came home one evening and dropped a bomb. She told me, Dad's in the hospital. There had been a serious car accident and he was getting stitches to his head. And at that moment, it was as though the bottom had just dropped for me. What if I lose both of my parents? Is this what it feels like to be alone in the world? Is this what it feels like to be an orphan? It was like the bottom had just dropped out of my life. That's how the disciples may have felt that night that we read about and hear about in our gospel passage. It's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They've dined, Jesus has washed their feet, and then he drops a bomb. He says this, little children, yet a little while I am with you, and where I am going, you cannot come. And the disciples at that moment must have thought, what? What? They had followed him for three and a half years. They had heard his teaching. They'd seen a score of miracles. He had done signs in their presence. He'd walked on water. He had fed the 5,000. They had just watched him, witnessed him raising Lazarus from the dead. And then they marched with him up the Temple Mount, and there he overturned the uh, tables of the money changers. It was all beginning to come together. It was all starting to happen. And finally, they had begun to believe that he was the Messiah. And now, what? You're going away? It must have been like the bottom had just dropped out for them. And they were probably feeling... A little bit alone at that point, perhaps abandoned, about to be left behind like orphans. I don't know if you can identify with that or not. Many of you probably can. You know, we've been in touch with many, many of uh, you in the congregation through phone calls and whatnot. And we've been in touch. We've been in contact. But you know, there might be a number of people who have fallen through the cracks. There's a number of people we haven't talked to or heard from. And I want to just reach out to you right now and tell you that if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling abandoned, if you're feeling isolated in this whole crisis, and you need a little bit of help, maybe some encouragement, then reach out. Give us a phone call because we would love to talk with you. We would love to give words of encouragement and the good news to you and bless you at this time. But do you identify with the disciples at this point? Maybe you can. And maybe they were asking the question that some of us are asking, how are we gonna make it? What is gonna sustain us in this time to come when Jesus is not with us face to face? To the disciples and to us, Jesus, gives a promise he says this he says i will ask the father and he will give you another helper even the spirit of truth and that is good news jesus will ask and the father will send a helper another helper an advocate a comforter literally one who comes alongside the question is how does one receive this helper who is the holy spirit well at the outset it sounds like there's conditions on it because we hear those first words if you love me you'll keep my commandments and what it sounds like to us is well if you love me then keep my commandments and then you'll receive the holy spirit that's how we tend to hear it is the holy spirit in fact a reward for spiritual overachievers who somehow figure out how to do the commandments a little bit better than the rest? And the answer to that is no. 
The true sense of these words are more like this. You who are loving me will keep, hold on to, guard, and cherish my words. In fact, it's not a command. It's not even a warning. It's a promise. You who love Jesus because he first loved us will keep, hold on to, guard, and cherish his words. It's very close to what Paul says in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 15. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Where the word of Christ dwells richly, you can bet on one thing, you can count on this, that where the word of Christ dwells richly, there also dwells the Holy Spirit. And where you have the word of Christ and the Holy Spirit, there is love. You know, it's interesting because Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And natural question at that point would be, well, which commandments is he talking about? What commandments is he identifying here? And in the Gospel of John, there really is only one commandment, just one commandment that Jesus gives. And it is this, love one another as I have loved you. As I have loved you, Jesus says. This is the foundation. This is why we can love, because he has first loved us. And so in love, he promises another helper, another helper. Now, what does that mean? Well, the word for helper in the Greek is parakletos, or paraclete in English. We sometimes use that word, and it literally means one who comes alongside. It's a court term, and it refers to one who is an advocate in a court of law, one who will take up our case for us, one who will defend us, uh, if you will, one who is in our corner. How do we make it through a crisis? What sustains us? Well, if you think on your past crises and the way that you made it through difficult times, very often you'll understand and know that there was somebody in your corner. There was a friend or a relative or somebody who came alongside of you and helped you through that time. There's an advocate, if you will. And note, notice that Jesus says, I will send you another helper meaning that there must have been an advocate before the Holy Spirit, a helper before the sending of the Holy Spirit. And so in his first letter, John tells us, chapter 2, verse 1, Little children, I am writing to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Jesus, the first advocate, the first helper. We have an advocate with the Father, and he is the propitiation. In other words, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And this Jesus, this first advocate, as we look at the record, he seems to have a heart for those who are lonely. Those perhaps who have been abandoned, those who are outcast, those who might feel themselves to be orphans. Again and again, we see Jesus come alongside and advocate for people who need an advocate. He encounters a leper and he touches that leper and he says, I am willing, be clean, thereby removing the social stigma from the leper. He delivers a man who has a legion of demons and he re-socializes him. He says, go back to your friends and tell what great things the Lord has done for you. He encounters a Canaanite woman and heals her daughter and says, oh woman, great is your faith, be it done to you as you have desired. And the list goes on from there. The woman at the well, Nicodemus, Mary Magdalene, again and again, Jesus welcomes those who are lonely those who are outliers, those who are outcasts, those who may have felt abandoned. And it is this advocate who ultimately is himself alone and abandoned, who becomes our propitiation, our atoning sacrifice, 
This advocate came from the Father for you. This advocate gave himself up for you. And so you can believe the words of Jesus when he says, I will not leave you as orphans. He came all the way from the Father down to earth to die for your sins and mine. He came all the way from the Father to live for us, to be raised for our justification. Do you think that he's going to abandon you? And it is this Jesus, this advocate who says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you, he says. And you who love Jesus, who keep and guard and hold on to and cherish his words, hear these words of his. Yet a little while and the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. That might be the promise that kept the disciples from complete despair during those awful three days between the crucifixion and the third day when he rose again. And perhaps it was those same words that stuck with them as they went out and became the church and spread the word about Jesus and suffered martyrdom, suffered death at the hands of their enemies. It might be those words that sustained them during days of persecution and days of martyrdom. What sustained those disciples and those followers of Jesus? And what will sustain us during times of crisis? The love of Jesus who said, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. And in the history of the church, in the collective experience of the church, they found that to be true. They found it to be true every time they communed together and celebrated his presence through the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup. They found that experience of Christ with them who would not abandon them to be the ongoing experience of the church. And they remembered the words of Jesus who said, because I live, you also will live. Beloved, the word of Christ, the word of Christ is not sheltered in place, but goes out and gives hope and gives forgiveness of sins and therefore life. Even in a crisis such as this, the word of Christ is not sheltered in place. And that's why we can put out these videos and have Zoom meetings. We do it with the utmost confidence that Christ can use these means of technology to get out his word of hope and sustain his people in their faith. The word of Christ is not sheltered in place, but in fact dwells in you richly, you who love Jesus. And in verse 21, Jesus says, whoever has my words and keeps them, keeps them, holds on to, guards, cherishes them. He it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved my, by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Well, my mom got well, lived for a few years after that bout in the hospital. My dad was okay, even though his car was a total wreck, and he lived for many years after that. And I learned in that first crisis in my Christian life, this truth, that Jesus will not leave us as orphans, but that he would come to us. And for us today, for those of you who love Jesus, there is no social distance between you and the love of Christ. And if you, uh, perchance, have not received this love of Christ, if you have not previously believed in Jesus, then I want to issue an invitation to you to receive this good word, this message, this gospel of hope, to receive Jesus into your life. And please, give us a call. Talk to us. We'd love to have that conversation with you about getting baptized and being introduced to this loving web of relationships, the love of God the Father, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that we talk about. We'd love to introduce you to a family of God 
who loves one another and walks with Jesus. If you have never received this love, I want to encourage you today to put your trust in the crucified and risen Christ, who is your advocate, who has been your propitiation, the atoning sacrifice, not only for the sins of those who believe, but in fact, for the sins of the whole world. Let us know, talk to us about getting baptized. And to all of you, may the word of Christ continue to richly dwell in you. Keep the word, hold on to it, guard it, and cherish it, for these are the words of life. And the words of life tell us this, love one another and continue, persist in that love, for love will sustain us. Amen. Let us continue our worship by confessing together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And as we gather for prayer now, we have a few prayers that we'll be keeping today. First of all, uh, we'll be continuing to pray for Judy Drake as she recovers from her surgery last week. We'll also be including Stephanie Lorenz, who had knee replacement surgery this last week, as she uh, recovers and rehabilitates. Keeping Mercedes Whitmire in our prayers as um, she has a brain aneurysm and uh, will be having a procedure as well very soon. And also, we'll be keeping in prayer Candace Duell and her family at the loss of her grandfather, Roy Williams, who went home to be with the Lord. With that, let's join together in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We rejoice, O Lord, that you have not left us as orphans, but you have sent your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who dwells with us and leads us and guides us in the truth. May the Spirit of truth light our paths and lead us into righteousness. And may your Holy Spirit work in and through your church, that the world might know you and have life in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice, O Lord, that because Christ lives, we live also. Help us daily to walk in this newness of life that is found in Jesus and manifest in us the love for you and love for our neighbors that our sinful nature lacks. Help us to abide in your word and follow your commandments, that the love of Christ might be shown in this sin-darkened world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this world, O Lord, you promise that there will be trials, persecutions, and challenges to our faith. Help us to be ready to make a defense for the hope that is within us. Equip us daily with your word and truth. Put your words in our hearts and on our lips that we might stand strong in the midst of trials and temptations and be witnesses to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And help us to do it with gentleness and respect for the sake of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you appoint government for the good of man, that we might live decently and in good order. Grant wisdom for, for our leaders, for our president, governor, and all who make and administer our laws. And bless all institutions that care for those in need, especially during this time with many people out of work and unable to provide for their families. Have mercy, lead and guide, and equip your church to help as able. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our refuge and strength, you are the healer of body and soul. Through the resurrection, you have promised restoration to our mortal bodies. 
Until that time when all flesh is restored, we pray your mercy and strength upon those who are hurting and suffering, those in need of your love and care. We pray especially for Jesse Monroe, Marion Connolly, Life Zachariasen, Chris Brace, Elaine Staggs, Ron Edwards, Karen Ingalls, Diane Smith, Carol Manisto, Pastor Steve Lundblom, Gloria Doyle, Rod McCarley, Judy Drake, Ron Irwin, Don Yant, Stephanie Lorenz, Mercedes Whitmire, and all those who we now name in our hearts. We pray also for the swift end of this pandemic and for the healing of all those who suffer from this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the resurrection and the life, O Christ, and we rejoice in this Easter season and the promises that are ours in you. Grant comfort in the resurrection and the promises of eternal life to Candace Duell and family at the loss of her grandfather, Roy Williams. May they find refuge in your loving arms and strength in your victory over death and the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's join in our closing song, Lift High the Cross. <laughs>